oxtail prices are off of the charts y'all when i last went to the store it was like 13 dollars a pound and y'all we not doing that okay not in this inflation economy okay so check it out i'm going to show you guys how to make beef shank taste just like your favorite oxtail recipe okay and beef shank is literally half the price and you see all that meat okay what makes it a great sub is this marrow here mm -hmm. and it's really meaty and we're gonna sh i'm gonna show you how to make it nice and tender all right you know when you do two pounds of oxtail you're practically not getting no food <laughs> however with the shank when you do two pounds you're actually getting like a good amount of meat so I'm going to give this a rinse and then I'm going to use a little bit of white vinegar and I'm just going to like rub my meat. You see how there is like some blood and things on there. I actually get this from a butcher and I like how they butcher the meat, but you know, sometimes I just feel like there's a little something left. And so I like to just give it a little rinse over. Now, of course, we love our oxtail for all of that fat and collagen that it has, but child, at $13 a pound, you can miss me on that one, honey. Okay. This video is inspired by Ron on the grill. Now he took his beef shank and he put it on the grill, smoked it, braised it, did all sorts of yumminess with it that you guys know I can't do because I don't grill or smoke. All right, so I'm gonna link his video down below and you guys go and check him out. Now for my veggie prep, I am going to chop up half of a large onion and some peppers from my garden. You guys know I just love to use produce that you grow yourself, baby. You sometimes you just got to grow your own i'm also going to use two carrots and i'm going to cut them on a diagonal just to make them look really nice and fancy okay also chopped up one homegrown tomato off camera i'm going to start to season my beef shank and i'm not going to go heavy with the seasonings on the beef shank at all now there will be a good amount of seasonings in like the gravy but i want to brown these very very well so i want to minimize the seasonings that i put on the shank okay so i'm going to go in first with some maggie seasoning this is actually has a bit more of a umami flavor than just regular soy sauce but regular soy sauce is fine i'm using about half of a tablespoon and then I'm using some browning. This is going to give that good, beautiful color that you're used to in oxtails or stewed meats. Just a little bit. It's just for some color, okay? And then I'm going to use this oxtail seasoning. I actually have two different oxtail seasonings I'll be using, but this one's a little bit more similar to like beef bouillon or almost like a seasoned salt. So that's why I'm using this one. There's not a lot of herbs and things in here per se, okay? So I'm gonna go in with about a teaspoon or you know, a, a teaspoon from your spirit, all right, of this seasoning. I'm gonna mix it well, especially to make sure that this browning is well distributed. You can also burn the sugar when you do this instead of using browning. However, I find that with shank, um, I just like using the browning a little bit better. It just gives the color, you know, a bit more even, something like that. So you just choose whatever method that you like. You can marinate this, but I do not. I find that it's going to be cooked so long that it kind of does not matter. So I just let this sit to the side while I prep stuff, and that is it. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Have my enamel cast iron skillet on a medium heat. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. You know, um, shake is not as, you know, it doesn't have as much fat as oxtail. So, I'm also going to add a little butter too. <laughs> Bro butter, y'all. Okay, we're going to put our shanks in. Y'all, we're going to let them get nice and brown and beautiful, okay? That's going to bring out that nice, rich flavor in this meat. 
we're going to let it sear undisturbed for at least a good four, maybe even five minutes, depending on how hot your pan is. After five minutes, I'm going to flip my beef shank. Guys, it's nice and melanated. Baby, when you see that melanin on that beef shank, you know your food going to taste right. Okay. And then I'm going to allow it to sear for five more minutes on this side. Remove your beef shank and place them in the same bowl that you marinated them in. Remember, these shanks are still pretty much raw, so it's totally fine to put them back into that bowl. I'm going to turn the heat down to like a medium low. You know, cast iron skillets, the heat can really keep going up and up and up. So you don't want it too high when you saute all your vegetables. This is some green seasoning, fresh. It's like fresh garlic and scallions and herbs. I'm actually going to put a video out soon on how, an updated video I should say, on how I make this. But I like to add this because it just adds a strong, fresh taste to your food. After this sautés for about three minutes, I'm going to season it up with all the seasonings that you see here. The oxtail seasoning, this one is pretty much just spices, no real salt. And I do know this isn't curry, but baby, a little bit of curry powder do actually taste really good in this dish. The oil and toasting is going to bring out the flavor of the spices. So allow them to just toast for about two minutes. Then put in your allspice berries, a bay leaf, and about half of a cup of a dry red wine. You don't need this brand. You just need a dry red wine. If you are not a alcohol drinker, you can actually skip this and just put in some beef broth. Some people don't like to do this, but I do think that a tablespoon of ketchup is really nice. That little bit of acidity just brings out other flavors. I'm then going to rinse out my marination bowl with some boiling water. Always add water that is hot to a dish that is cooking. That will keep the temperature of the pot up. And you'll actually see me add water to this dish a few times, even while it is braising. It's always warm water or boiling water. I feel like the color needed to be a bit darker, so I just added a drop more of that browning, and then I'm going to use some better than bouillon beef. This is going to add like a deep, rich roasted beef flavor. This is about a half of a tablespoon since I'm just using water. If you're using beef broth, then you don't need to use this. I've already added herbs, but I just have to add more. I am a herbs in your food girly. Ooh, baby, this Caribbean sunshine is wicked, honey. This is a fresh scotch bonnet from my garden. Let that thing bust in your dish. Whew, child, you gonna be crying for Jesus, okay? Because that thing is hot. Okay, but just putting it in there and letting it cook in the sauce is going to perfume everything in a lovely way. I'm going to place this in the oven and I'm going to allow this to cook for one hour undisturbed. I'm going to be braising my beef shanks at 375 degrees. However, feel free to braise yours at a lower temperature like 300 or 350 if you want yours to just cook for longer and just get that really slow roasted vibe. Okay, so after an hour, I am going to just move everything around and then I'm going to baste my beef shanks a bit. How much gravy you want is really up to you. I'm actually not doing a ton of gravy today, but that's just personal preference. I place this back in the oven and let it cook for 30 more minutes. Then I am going to flip the beef shank just to make sure that it doesn't dry out on the top side. But the particular cast iron that I'm using, the lid heats up and gets really hot, which is great for cooking, but it also makes the top get really roasted. I'm then going to add about a cup and a half more water. Remember, this water is boiling, baby. Put this back into the oven for about 30 to 45 more minutes. Then I'm going to cook it for 30 more minutes. I'm going to add a little bit more water. You know, my dish is shallow, so I just add a little water, you know, here and there whenever I check it. And I could have done this earlier, but I just remembered that I wanted to add some tomato paste. So I go in with about half a tablespoon of tomato paste. It just gives a nice richness to the sauce that I like. I cover it and just let it finish cooking for about 30 minutes. 
You can also pressure cook the beef shank for about 45 minutes or you can cook it on the stove top for about two and a half to three hours. It takes about two and a half hours to three hours to get done in the oven as well. During the last 30 minutes of the cook time for my shanks, I like to go ahead and put together the rest of the meal. So I'm doing some steamed veg. I'm doing a little bit of kale, some purple cauliflower, some carrots, and I like to season it with a bit of vegeta, and that's it. This is pretty much like a seasoned salt that is perfect for vegetables it only takes about five minutes for these veggies to steam and i feel like whenever i have something a little heavier like a beef shank i love to have a light side you guys let me know in the comments what your preferred sides are for oxtail and beef shank and dishes like that a beef shank is ready y'all it's almost not right how good this smell like so, it smells so good i almost feel wrong telling y'all because y'all can't experience what i'm experiencing right now mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. y'all you better make you some okay now guys this beef shank is so tender you see that baby now if you like a lot of gravy you could just add you know more water to start out with and just let it thicken more but what i'm going to do is that you know i just like to press it a little bit into the drippings and that'll get you all the flavor that you need now the best part of this is that marrow baby don't play with that marrow okay this right here mm -mm -mm. I'm talking about a flavor shot baby that's what you're looking for okay that really flavors up the gravy all right let me know if you think this is a good substitute for oxtails and if you don't use beef shank tell me what cut of beef you actually would use as an oxtail sub my goodness my sunday dinner was so yum let me know if you're going to make this whole meal god bless you guys for watching my channel and supporting me i'll see you next time goodbye